In our video today, we're going to be continuing to talk about properties and proofs and how we can use our geometric theorems um, and vocabulary and postulates in order to um, defend or prove our given information. So we're going to start with just a couple more examples where we're given either a diagram or a statement or both, and we're asked to write a statement based on that and provide a reason just to help us practice kind of what we're looking for when we're writing proofs. So given that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary in this diagram, the conclusion that we could come to is that we would know the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 should be equal to 180 degrees. And we know that because the definition of supplementary angles tells us that two angles that are supplementary must have a sum of 180. So therefore, we're just using that definition of supplementary angles to make that statement. In our second box, it says angle JKM and angle MKL are complementary. So we would know that the measure of angle JKM plus the measure of angle MKL should equal 90 degrees. And that's because of our definition of complementary, very similar to our first one here. But we know that complementary angles have to add up to 90 degrees. So we're just relying on that definition in order to write the statement here. In the next box, it says the ray DE is perpendicular to the ray EF. When things are perpendicular, we know that they create a right angle. So the statement that we could make from this is that the angle DEF is a right angle. And we would know this because we're using that definition of what it means to be perpendicular. So we have to use a definition based on something that was given to us. So since it's given that those are perpendicular, we're using that definition in order to make our claim. In our next one, it says angle DEF is a right angle. And so it's already told to us that this is a right angle. And what we know about right angles is that they are 90 degrees. So the claim we can make is that the measure of angle DEF is equal to 90. And that would be because of the definition of a right angle because all we were told here is that, that it was a right angle. So we're using that definition to make the statement. So let's go ahead and actually practice some of our two column proofs here with our statements and our reasons. And we may use some of those angle properties later in our proofs. In our first one, we're getting started with just some midpoint practice here. It says E is the midpoint of segment BD. So if E is the midpoint of segment BD, remember BE and ED would have to be congruent. And then it also tells us, given that EC and ED are congruent. Well, I just marked that ED has one tick mark because it was congruent to BE, but I'm also now saying that EC and ED are congruent, so I can mark them all the same marking. So we can see that all three of those segments are actually the same here. And I want to prove that the segment EC is congruent to the segment BE. You'll notice that parts of our proof here are given to us and parts of them are not filled in. So we're going to fill in the pieces using what's already here. The first reason is given. So this is where we can just copy in the given information from the top of the proof. So E is the midpoint of BD. And then there was also that second bit of given information that we need to include that EC is congruent to ED. That was part of our given information here. So what we're going to do now is kind of look at the next line. They're telling us that BE is congruent to ED. Why are we allowed to make that claim? Well, we were told in step one that E was the midpoint, so we can make that claim just because of the definition of midpoint. So let's see where we've gotten to at this point. We've already said that EC is congruent to ED. And we just said that ED and BE are also congruent. Therefore, we can make the claim that BE should be congruent to EC. Now, in this case, we have taken two pieces here. We knew that pink was congruent to green and yellow was congruent to green. Therefore, we know that yellow and pink are both congruent. So that could be an example of transitive property. You could also use substitution here because you were saying that you just took this example, or sorry, this second line here, and you replaced um, ED with EC. So either one of those is fine there, but it's more specifically transitive property. So that's the one I'm going to choose to write. 
Now, in my last line, the only thing that happened was I switched the order of how I saw this. So this is just going to be our symmetric property of equality. Remember, we're allowed to rewrite the order of things um, in order to see that things are equal on either side or that those measures would be equal. All right, in our next line, it says that the ray MP bisects the angle LMN. So right away, we already notice it's marked as being those two separate congruent angles. We're being asked to prove that two times the measure of LMP should equal the measure of angle LMN. So all of our statements were actually already filled in for us in this proof. We need to give proper reasons for why those were allowed to be said. So this first statement matches what was given. So we can just say the reason is given. In our next line, it says that the measure, or sorry, that the angle LMP is congruent to the angle PMN. So those are our two small angles inside. And we're just using the angle bisector definition here because we were told that it was being bisected here. So definition of angle bisector would be our reason that word bisect had already come up in line one. We're using it to make this congruency statement about those two smaller angles. In my next line, I see that the measure of angle LMP plus the measure of angle PMN is equal to the measure of angle LMN. So right now, what I can see going from here to here, I'm adding two angles that were next to each other. So that's just my angle addition postulate. I'm just stating that if you would add those two measures together, you get that outer angle. So that is just our angle addition postulate. And so now what we're going to do in the next line is that it's pretty much the same thing. The only thing that's changed is this part is being replaced with LMP. So I'm taking the information from this line, knowing that those two angles had to be congruent, and I'm relying on the fact that I know the definition of congruence is that measures are equal. So I'm substituting in the measure of angle LMP where I was seeing the measure of angle PMN. So that was just using the substitution property to replace one part there. In our final line then, all we do is take these two pieces here, our L measure of angle LMP plus measure of angle LMP. You're just taking two things that are the same and you're adding them. And if you add two things that are the same, you're basically taking that thing and multiplying it by two. So we can say that our final reason is just rewriting that using combining like terms. It would be the same as if I saw x plus x equals that. And so we basically are just saying that would be the same as 2x, right? So it looks a little funny with our angle measures here, but all we're simply doing there is either simplifying could be a reason, or you could say that it's because you combine like terms. So a couple different options for what you call that. We're going to go ahead and keep practicing a few more proofs. So on our next example, we are given that the line AB is perpendicular to the line EF as well as the line CD being perpendicular to the line EF. So we have two lines that are perpendicular to EF here. And remember, this symbol means perpendicular. So that's what that's telling us. I went in and added those markings of right angles because I know the definition of perpendicular means that they will meet at 90 degree angles. And I'm being asked to prove that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. So my first statement, line, and reason are both completely blank. And remember, we always start with what was given to us. So we have line AB is perpendicular to line EF and line CD is perpendicular to line EF. And that was just because it was given. In our next line, we can say that angle one and angle two would be right angles. And that's just because it is our definition of perpendicular lines. Since the given information told us they were perpendicular, we're using that definition to make the claim that they are right angles. Since we know they are right angles, we can say that the measure of angle one is equal to 90, as well as the measure of angle two is equal to 90. And we're just relying on the definition of right angles here because we know that right angles are always worth 90 degrees. So at this last point now, if you're stuck on what to do, go back and look and see what it's asking us to prove. We were asked to say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. Well, why are we allowed to say that? Well, the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 
were both just defined above as being equal to 90. So we can say that this is true because of our transitive property of equality. In our next example, it says that angle one and angle two are supplementary and that measure of angle two is 62. Now there's not a picture given here, but if you like to visualize what's happening, you can always draw out a diagram here. We are told that angle one and angle two are existing here and that angle two is 62 degrees. So that would need to be our acute angle. So if that helps you kind of visualize what's happening, you can always draw the picture. We're gonna fill in our given information and that is already up top. So we're just repeating what was said, that angle one and angle two are supplementary. And that is just given. So if we take a look then at what was next, we should also include our measure of angle two equals 62, because that was given as well. So make sure you're actually including that as well. We'll go to our next line and say, well, because angle one and angle two are supplementary, we can make the claim that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180. And that's just relying on our definition of supplementary angles. Then we can take what we were also given, which was that the measure of angle two is 62. And we can plug that right into our equation here. So we can rewrite it as measure of angle one plus 62 should equal 180. And since we only took that one part to replace it with, that is our substitution property. At this point now, we wanna get down to this last line that we were asked to prove, which is that the measure of angle one equals 118. So if you think about your rules for solving an equation here, we would get there by subtracting 62 from each side. So we're just using our subtraction property of equality for this last part. In this example, we are given that the ray VT is perpendicular to the ray VK. So we know that right away those are going to create a right angle, and we can start figuring out how we can get down to proving that angle 1 would be complementary to angle 2. So let's see. If we've got the ray VT is perpendicular to the ray VK, that is just because it was given to us. So from that claim, we are able to say that angle TVK is a right angle. And we know that because the definition of perpendicular tells us that. So since they were perpendicular, definition of perpendicular is our reason for claiming they are right angles. In the next line then, because the measure of um, a right angle is 90 degrees, we can say measure of angle TVK equals 90 and we're using the definition of right angles here. Then we can use the um, measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 90 and state this because the angle addition postulate lets us add up those two angles that are adjacent to one another. And we were able to claim that because we know that um, angle two and angle one add up to make angle TVK. So we're just using that angle addition postulate to say that those two measures would have to equal 90 degrees because we already knew TVK was 90. So now that we've made that claim, we'd be able to say that angle one and angle two are complementary because we've seen that they add up to 90 degrees. So we're using the definition of complementary angles here. In our last example, we are told that measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three, and we're asked to prove that the measure of angle CBD is equal to the measure of angle EBA. So in this first line, we know that angle one and angle three are equal because it was given. Then in the next line, angle two plus angle th one are equal to the measure of angle CBD. So that's showing up right here. And that's just because of our angle addition postulate. Now you'll notice that the next line, the statement is not given to us, but the reason is again angle addition postulate. So where else can we add angles together here? 
Well, we can see that the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three would equal the measure of the angle EBA. And that is because of the angle addition postulate. So just adding those two angles together. And then we can take measure of angle two plus measure of angle one equals measure of angle EBA. And all we're changing there is that three and one are being replaced. And so since we've just taken that and replaced something one to one, that is our substitution property. Finally, to get down to our last line then, the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle one is equal to EBA, just like the measure of angle two was e plus angle one was equal to the measure of angle CBA. So because those were both equal to our um, measure of angle two plus measure of angle one, therefore they can be equal to each other here, and we can make measure of angle CBD equal to measure of angle EBA by our transitive property.